Hi, I'm Lise from Azumolo. These cute baby bibs are the perfect gift for that baby shower as a christening present or the child's first birthday. They're easy to make as a weekend project when with the benefit of using up some of your scrap fabric. And Christmas is coming up soon. This is the first in a series of applique baby bib designs that you can easily make yourself. I've made these for years and I have many different patterns. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in videos with some of the other patterns. And can I ask you to please take a minute to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's completely free and it would really help getting our videos out to more people. And ding that little bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. And if nothing else, give us a like. Thank you. We are Andy and Lisa, a musician and an illustrator. This is where all our crazy ideas come together. Welcome to the Suomulo Room. For this baby bib, you can download a free pattern from our website, suomulorum.com. The link is in the description below. You will need some wadding. I use this 50-50 cotton bamboo blend. It is really soft. It's naturally antibacterial and it holds up well, even after many times in a washing machine. You'll also need a fusible layer. Mine is Bonderweb from Flizzlene, but any similar product will do. There's a glue layer carried on parchment paper on which you can draw the pattern. Then of course you need some fabric. Two pieces need to be large enough for the front and back of the bib. The rest can be smaller scraps. I usually sort my scraps into piles of similar colors, so I can mix and match pieces that suit each other. Let's see what we have. I think this one is large enough to be the back, as well as the top of one of the mushrooms. I usually make labels naming each part of the pattern as in A3 for the large mushroom head, A1 for the middle bit, A2 for the stem, and the same with the B for the other mushroom. I label the front fabric F and the back with a B. So I put the B for back sticker on the back fabric and also the sticker for the top of the large mushroom A3. I label the front fabric with the F sticker. Then the head of the small mushroom with B3. At this point I have not completely decided which fabric goes where, but I place the stickers as I go. This dark pink will be B1. This one the stem, so that'll be B2, and so on. I also change my mind and replace some of the stickers as I find a better solution. Cut the basic bib pattern out. If you would like to showcase your version of this baby bib on the Surmolerum website, send a photo of your finished bib together with your first name and your country to the email on the pattern. We will then add it to the Applique Baby Bib Showcase Gallery on the website. Link and email address are in the description below. Layer the back fabric, the wadding and the front fabric and cut out the basic bib shape. I'm making both a pink and a blue version here. Place the fusible bonder web paper on top of the pattern and trace each shape onto the parchment side of the paper. Mark each shape with its code A1, A2, A3 and so on, so that you know which is which.
roughly cut around each shape well outside of the lines. Now place the cut out bundle whip on the wrong side of the fabric, matching up the numbers on the paper pieces with the stickers on the fabric. Then iron each pattern onto the wrong side of the fabric, glue side down, paper side up. Be careful no bundle whip is sticking outside the fabric, as this will stick to your ironing board. And how do I know this? Dough. Then cut out each piece to the line. Now it's puzzle time! Peel the parchment paper off each piece and place it on the front base fabric. You may have to move them around a bit until you're happy with how it looks. Be careful not to go too close to the edges, because you will need space for the bias binding later. Then bring it to your ironing board and iron it on with the pressing sheet between. I have this silicone pressing sheet, but you can also use a piece of cloth or a tea towel. And that's the prep work done. Now we need to set up the sewing machine for silk stitching. Try it out on a test piece first. I set my machine to zigzag 2.5mm wide and 035 long. I changed that to 030 at the end of setup. I loosened the top tension in several steps as I was aiming for the bottom thread to pull the top thread onto the wrong side, but it was not enough. This is still not enough. This is the top of the fabric and the bobbin thread is showing on the top.
It's getting closer. But there's still a few places where the bobbin thread is showing. So I can't loosen it anymore, so I'll have to go to the bobbin. I had to tighten the bobbin holder to make it happen. After I did that, I got the perfect silk stitch. This is exactly what I want. Nice. Now let's sew this bib. It's important in which order you sew it. Anything that's in the back to be sewn first. So first the back underside of the mushroom heads, then the stems, then the bottom front of the heads, and finally the top of the mushrooms. Try to have the stitching close to but still covering the edge of the shapes so that there are no raw edges. After each row of stitches, use a pin to pull the upper thread through to the wrong side. When pulling slightly on the lower thread, you can pull up a loop on the upper thread, then grab it with a pin and pull it through and bind the two threads together with two knots. This can be a bit fiddly, but it ensures that the stitching holds up in the long run, even after many times in the washing machine, so it's well worth the effort. Continue with the other seams, making sure to tie them up as you go. Iron the bib from the back and layer it. First the back piece, then the wadding, and finally your beautiful application piece.
pin it all the way around. Again, I'm making both a pink and a blue version here. Now zigzag all around the edges, making sure all the layers line up. Trim back any wadding that sticks out. For the quilting it does not need much. I sew around the motif about 2mm out, then just a few lines on the surrounding area to divide larger pockets. Now for the bias binding. Open the bias binding, line up the edge on the back side and sew in the fold all the way around the outside.
pull the bias binding all the way around, stretching it up from the seam. This makes it easier to get a neat finish when sewing the second pass. Fold it over on the right side and sew the top stitch about 1mm from the edge of the bias binding. For the necktie, measure about 20 cm, that's 8 inches, of bias binding and start sewing on the neck piece at that point. Again, open the bias binding, line up the edge on the back of the bib and sew in the fold along the neckline. Cut the other end of the tie at the same length. On the right band first, fold the end over, then angle the very end and fold it in so that there's nothing sticking out. Pin it and do the same at the other end. Sew the top stitch on the very beginning of the folded bias binding on the left side of the bib, seeing it from the front. Then continue all the way to the bib itself, continue across the neckline and out onto the other string to the end where you have pinned it. Now the bib is finished, wrap it in some pretty paper and bring it to that baby shower. Please do send me a picture of it and I'll display it on the website. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a like. Please subscribe to our channel, it's completely free. And if you hit the little bell icon, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. And remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind.
Thank you.